So welcome Professor Harik uh, Silva for uh, this uh, Meta Talk 1. So this is a sort of uh, interview on your career and how you enter his upcoming metallurgist. And uh, our uh, metallurgical engineering platform having students, uh, metallurgists and professors around the world and uh, who have followed us on uh, uh, social media platform like Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. We have around uh, 178,000 plus followers on Facebook and uh, 32,000 plus followers on Instagram and uh, 18,000 plus followers on uh, LinkedIn and uh, 9,000 plus followers on YouTube. And uh, our main aim is to spread knowledge of metallurgy around the world and network with the metallurgists around the world and now I'll welcome Professor Harik Shilva for accepting our invitation to join uh, first uh, Meta Talk. And this is the short introduction of Professor Harik Shilva. So Professor Harik Shilva is a professor at the IFMG campus Oro Branco, Brazil. And his research area is uh, on mm -hmm. transport phenomena and uh, chemistry of uh, metallurgical processes. So welcome, Professor. And uh, yes, yeah, so if you can uh, just uh, give a brief intro uh, introduction about yourself and uh, where do you work right now? I think uh, you are in Brazil, so you can uh, tell about your university and uh, uh, what are the career options uh, for the students. Uh, for example, for pursuing bachelor's, master's, and PhD, and postdoc, and after. Even if someone has completed PhD, then uh, how they can pursue career in your university? And uh, so first, if you can introduce yourself uh, about uh, yourself, about your academic academic history and uh, research experience. Thanks. My, <clears throat> I'm Eric Silva. I come from a small town here in Minas Gerais. It's a center province in Brazil. It's a, a very important one regarding uh, metallurgical and mining process. Uh, the biggest companies are here. We have here uh, Gerdau. It's a, a national uh, company, but it works uh, worldwide. And we have several acelometal plants also. I say that because the city that I come from uh, started uh, working with metallurgy around 200 years ago when the founder of the city started a little uh, small business of making tools in the 800s. His house and his facilities are still there for visitors to see and know the process. So that's very important. In 1930s, the Belgian group uh, Arbeid uh, I started a company there that uh, was called Belbo Mineira. In, in the late 2000s, it becomes Acelor and then, then Acelometal. And so we, we have this big company there that's very important for the city. It's where my father worked for over 32 years. My father was a floor worker. He had no specific education but he worked in continuous casting. And since I was a kid, I was very interested in how can we extract the metal from the ore, from literally rocks and dirt and make useful things with the metal, like chairs and cars and computers and spaceships and everything. So I always have this curiosity. And when I finished high school, I moved to Ouro Preto. I don't know if you heard about it. It's a very important city in Brazil for study and for tourism also. It's where we have the first engineering school in Brazil that was founded in 1876. So for some French initiative and Brazilian government initiative at the time, and I thought that was the, better, the best place to start studying metallurgy. 
So I had a five-year program, a bachelor program. Our engineers in Brazil are mainly five years long. I don't know in India how it works. In India, the Bachelor of Technology is four-year program and the Master's is two years. And PhD is normally five years. Okay. Here, the, the batch, uh, technologies are usually three, three and a half years. Bachelor are five years. From engineer, there are some bachelor that are fewer. Um, and master's two years, and doctorate four years normally. And there I stood. And now I don't work there anymore. I don't work in UFOP. I work in a um, technical institute. About 10 years ago, the, the government in Brazil founded very, I, I guess I can say little schools because the, the goal was to reach the most cities as possible. So we have this uh, called uh, EFMG, there is Federal Institute of Minas Gerais. Uh, only here in Minas Gerais, we have five institutes like that, that teaches technical disciplines, technical programs for high school grad, for high school students also. So there's is where I stood now, where I work now. So I teach metallurgy not only for bachelor grad, grad uh, level, but also for technicians, young uh, young people, uh, 14 years old, 15 years old, that hasn't, that haven't concluded their master, their high school level yet, they do that together. They stood in the morning, the normal class like math and science and geography, and in the afternoon they stood the metallurgy. So this this is how we we work here. So I'm I'm very a young student in the, the in the Institute. I'm a very young teacher, sorry. I started here in the end of um, 2019. From 2015 to 2017, I had my master's. So I work with uh, physical modeling of Tandish, of a continuous cast Tandish, and also a little bit of uh, CFD. I work with ANSYS Fluent. So we can see in the computer and we can see in the model with water. There was a one quarter scaled model, very good model. That uh, here we call a cold uh, steel shop. I don't know if you use the same terminology there, but we, we use the, this here. Yeah. So we can study, we can model with uh, oils to emulate the slags and water to emulate the steels and air to emulate argon or nitrogen or even normal air. So, and uh, uh, Professor, where uh, did you do your uh, PhD from? Uh... I don't have a PhD yet. Okay. I, so... I, I had, I studied my, I had my master's finished and when I finish my master's, we have a lot of opportunity here to, to get a, a job as a teacher. So the, the main opportunities here, the, the better ones, are in public schools and public institutes and in the federal ones. So it's very, very hard to get. So when I finish my master's, I focus on get a job and get some stability first. I worked in a similar institute uh, a few years ago to get some experience. I was, I didn't have tenure there. I was uh, only a temporary professor, but was very good. It worked the same way that we work here. And we have this called integrated uh, technician program that the students do simultaneously the high school and the technical program. And there is the, an option of only doing the technical program at night and also the, the bachelor, the engineer at night. So there in Juiz de Fora, 
is a, also a very big city here in Minas Gerais. We have there also a Salome Tal, for coincidence, and uh, we have a new company called Nexa. It's focused mainly in non-ferrous metals. So there they produce zinc from sulfites. Um, I say that because here in Minas Gerais, here where I live, I live now in Ouro Branco. There is no uh, half an hour drive from Ouro Preto. It's the, the center of all the, the companies here. So when we drive 200 kilometers in any direction, we get, I guess, 20 or perhaps 30 different companies that work with metallurgy. So it's a, a good place to, to be right now. So I'm very happy about that. And I'm very fortunate that I was born here. So I didn't have to move a lot to get here. So oh, that's a great professor to know about your professional background. Huh? And uh, <clears throat> our uh, next uh, question is on what is the scope of metallurgy and material science in Brazil, especially for like uh, international students and uh, international people uh, who can come there, who can study there and work there. Yeah, and you can uh, tell about your university, for example, if someone has done PhD, if they want to do postdoc and uh, yeah. how they can approach and uh, what should be the procedure to work in Brazil yeah. for uh, the, people around the world. The university that I had my bachelor degree and my master has a very good international program. So they accept students from all around the world. When I was... Uh, engineer student. I also studied six months in Germany. It was a very good opportunity for me. And here the main centers of study are the universities. As I said, now I study in, in a federal institute. There's a little different, a bit different. But the universities like uh, UFOP and UFMG, and UFV, yeah, I can write you the, the address later, are the men here in Minas Gerais that draw students from all over the world. In Sao Paulo, there, there are also some province, some province university like USP and Unicamp, that's very good. I'd like also to add the military institutes here. We have a great one in Sao Paulo, that has strong links with the Air Force. They have a huge program there. They, they, people from all over the world work there. And they work from uh, Embraer also. There's a big aircraft company here in Brazil. Or also do independent PhD there. So Embraer and IMI, this is Mittler, uh, Military Institute of uh, Engineer that is in Rio de Janeiro also attracts a lot of uh, students from all the world. When we be, when we are in Brazil and we study here, after we get a uh, graduate, a grade, we can work in the universities. We have a lot, a lot of companies here. Uh, the latest years are not very good because we have the crisis here and political crisis and economic crisis and now the COVID crisis. But we have a lot of opportunity and people can work and study also inside the companies. Many companies have some research programs, some research facility dedicated only for study the process outside the steel shop outside the plant, the metallurgical plant. So that's very good opportunity also. And there also we have a lot of people that come as guests to study for one year or two as a research guest or to help as a consultant. And there is also this opportunity when somebody knows, knows a, a lot about some specific uh, topic, the companies reach for them uh, regardless where they are in the world. So I have the opportunity to see 
people from Germany, people from USA also in the companies, inside the companies to help uh, we hear how to solve our problems and day-to-day -day problems or sometimes also to develop new products, develop new routes of process. That's a very good, can... uh, yeah, that's very good to know about that. Even the mil military institutes and air force, they, they also allow uh, international people to work well because uh, in some countries yeah. uh, they don't allow to work in defense area uh, for foreigners. Mm. So that's very good. And uh, uh, yeah, I forgot to introduce myself, uh, Dr. Abhishek Tewari. I did uh, my Bachelor of uh, Technology in Metallurgical and Materials Engineering from Indian Institute of Technology Rurki in India. And then I did my Master's from uh, Ecole National Superior, the Ceramic Industrial in Limoges, France. And then I did my PhD from uh, Monash University, Australia. And uh, then I have been in academics uh, for the last uh, five years. And uh, currently I'm in IIT Kharagpur as a researcher. So I work on uh, laser material processing of various metals. And I have been also working on additive manufacturing for various uh, metal alloys. So our uh, next uh, question to you is, uh, how do you get uh, interest in this uh, field? Uh, like, uh, what made you choose uh, metallurgy? And uh, like, uh, what was the main uh, motivation for? point to decide to choose metallurgy like not computer science or other branch of uh, engineering yeah. as i said i, I come from a city that uh, the metallurgy this um, the steel company there is very important for the city now not so much but because the city is getting bigger so i had this contact since i was a little kid and i have the interest in know how the metals come from how can we change things so and I was very good at math and chemistry. So I had uh, interest in becoming an engineer. And later I find out that I want to study more, to learn more. And I could do, and I can do that when I teach the others. So it was very important to me to pursue a career that I can teach the others what I learned and uh, maybe inspire other people. Also, uh, here we have uh, some besides the company that makes steel and some alloys, we have huge uh, mining companies. Uh, here in, in where I, I sit now, where, where I live, it's one of the biggest, one of the, I can say the most important uh, ore reservoirs in Brazil. And we have here Vale, we have here Samarco, some huge companies. Né? I guess you, you have heard some unfortunate accidents that we had here some years ago in 2015 and 2019, I guess. But so this area, it's very common to people to pursue this area when they have and the likes of it when they feel comfortable studying it. Yeah. I have some students, I have some colleagues that look at metallurgy and say, no, and that's not for me. I don't want that. And I, some do some internships. And when we see inside and steel company inside, when we see the, the steel in 1600 degrees, some people get in love with it and some people get horrified by it. And I was one of you that got in love and I really like, especially this part when the extractive metallurgy, when we can study the process and where it can from and where, how we can transform the metals. And I also, I want to mention that when I was in high school, my math teacher was an engineer, a metallurgic engineer, and he spoke, he spoke a lot of metallurgical inside his math class. So it, it he inspired me as well. Thank you for this interesting answer to the audience. And uh, <clears throat> you told that uh, you are from uh, transport phenomena and the chemistry of metallurgical processes background. So what do you mean by 
transport phenomena and chemistry of uh, metallurgical processes uh, i i say now i i will say the, for my students that transport phenomena is how we understand the mediums interacting with each other and so in fluid mechanics and fluid thermodynamics we stood how uh, liquids and gas move and how they can transfer energy how can they transfer mass from one place to another inside a, a ladder or steel ladder or in a flow in a, inside a reactor so i can i usually say the transport phenomenon we understand the way the fluids né, main fluids uh, move and interact with other medium né? and chemistry in the physical chemistry of metallurgy uh, we studied the how the atoms interact with each other i often say to my students that an atom is blind he can see he it, it doesn't know who is beside him who is near him but he can just feel energy so when the energy is in his favor he it can be placed in one position or move to another position or combine with other animals so it's all about energy so in physical chemistry we study the effects of energy and positions and configurations in solutions in mixtures in different phases of alloys mainly now we study mm, with particular interest the metal alloys but there are also some huge application in ceramics as well now when we study the phase diagrams there are a lot of research in ceramics also in mineralogy also also so it's very good to know that some concepts can be used in various area and when you understand how for example the free energy works and what can change it what is important i think it can apply to every part of extractive metallurgy so i think it's very important i see these uh, subjects and these disciplines as the core of extractive metallurgy thanks for uh, interesting answer so our uh, next question is how do you see the particular domain you are working with and uh, uh, how we can relate it to the real problems i i brought an example uh, last year when we had the schools stopped so we have no class i took the opportunity to learn a lot to take a lot of courses and a few of them were regarding slags steel slags so there we can see the effects of for example viscosity of materials and density of materials and activities of elements and their compounds when they are in solutions uh, what happened with the phase with the system is only one phase or is two phase so when we studied lags now i had a, a course from a teacher in the south of brazil Mm, the good thing of this pandemic that now we can learn and interact with each other regardless where we are and it get a lot of cheaper to to make this course sometimes a, a course like that were 2000 brazilian reais and now it's 100 just to get a, a scale of the discount so we studied a lot of slags and a good uh, steel maker it's a good slag maker it's a look uh, it's a good uh, slag uh, carrying so i guess in this slag we can refine we can absorb inclusions we can purify the metal we can protect the metal and it's all uh, physical chemistry and transport phenomena all applied we study transport of mass we you study transport of heat in some arc furnace we see the also the important of some mixtures with slag and gas to protect the arc the electric arc and protect the refractories and i can say also there is a field that we can explore we see here in, in brazil a lot of companies growing 
in making some synthetic slags for the process and making process, uh, process and procedures for refract refractory lining, refracting pr uh, protection. Um, we had a lot of small um, refractory fabrics also, but now uh, I guess you, you know also that the RHI Magnesita is one company and it's the major player here in Brazil. Um, besides uh, Vesuvius, yeah, it's an, another company. I guess it's based in Italy. So many studies go from there. So how can we protect this, the, the material, the foreigners? And I see it's very important to know the basis and people to apply it. Mm -hmm. This year I was last semester, and this semester it's ending now, next week is the last week of our school semester here because of the pandemic, the calendar was a little mixed. I asked some friends of mine, friends at work and companies to come to the students and talk to them about what they do and as we say, the real life, what we do in the steel plants and they come in the companies. And there the, the students could see how the concepts that we study here, that we discuss here, are really important in real life. So, by, uh, for example, I the first one was a really close friend of mine that is also from Monlevage, and he works there in the uh, Arcelormittal. He talked about the um, steel making, eh? um, primary steel making, and the hot metal treatment. And we were studying that at that point. So the same reactions, the same points of, um, the key points that I told the students that they are important to look after, it's the same one that he say, oh, that's what we do here, that's it's important for us. No? So I guess that's, that's it. <laughs> Thank you for your answer. And uh, our next uh, question is from our uh, audience. Uh, so, Mr. Sanjeev Dar has asked uh, one question from our audience. So, he has asked, "What? Why are there only three modes of transport? Can there be any other possible mechanism? So, like we have conduction, convection, and radiation." and uh, we could have any other uh, mode of transport? I guess so. Uh, when we see the, meet the modes of transport, we look how they interact with each other. For example, in radiation, we use um, electromagnet waves. You know? In diffusion, we study the movement of atoms. Uh, and convection, it's a diffusion that we study the collective movement of atoms. So there are a few models that are, that, that are used to describe these ways of transporting mass and transport energy and transport uh, momentum and angular momentum and etc. But as we learned in the past years, when we go further inside the atoms, there are a lot of new forces, a lot of new kind of energy parameters that are important. So when we try to study these factors, when we, we try to study what happens inside the atoms or what happened inside the big planets, for example, uh, there are not suitable our models are not suitable but today today when we study water and when we study uh, steel our models are suitable so they work we can change we can create a lot a lot of different models the reality what really happens nobody knows we don't know what happens we just imagine what can happen we theorize about it and we build models about it 
So that process of imagining and making theories and making models to comprove those theories, it will never end. Sometimes those models are good, some, sometimes those models works, and we keep them. For example, Newton built some calculus and built some physics parameter that work to today. But when we studied uh, Einstein's approach on physics, it's completely different. But it still works from our, for us when we get the classical approach of physics, the classical approach of uh, mechanics and thermodynamics. So I guess uh, to, to answer, mm -hmm. these three models, they work for now, but we can go further, we can improve them, and we can add other factors. But sometimes we cannot feel how these other factors can really affect our process. So sometimes there are no instruments to get the difference, so it's uh, irrelevant in practical uh, approach. And uh, sometimes we know the difference, but we choose to ignore it. For example, when we see a train moving in, I don't know, let's see a high-speed train, 300 kilometers per hour. We can use Einstein's approach to study that movement, but the difference from the, that approach to the classic approach is minimum. The speedometer in the train cannot get the, that approach. The length of the, the travel, the length of the rail, we not get that approach. We cannot feel the difference in the time because it's 10 times 10 to the minus, minus 10 and minus 20 the difference. So it's very, very little, so we cannot feel it. So I, I would put in that way. Those models that we have now, they work and they're not complete. We can understand it in a different way, but as long as they can describe what is happening, they are still good. If we can imagine another way to describe how particles interact with each other, how energy can move from one point to another, then we will need new models and we need a new theory to support it. So thank you for your answer. And, uh, our next question is, uh, what is the future scope of uh, transport phenomena? and uh, chemistry of uh, metallurgical processing. Uh, I, I see the future is in computer, in computer models. Now we see, for example, I studied with ANSYS Fluent for my masters and the version 12 to the 14 to the 17, it's very different. They're involved very fast. And with heavier and bulkier programs, we can, uh, we can do better math. We can uh, understand more and more complex uh, situations that today we need to oversimplify it to get a result. Sometimes getting a result, it's better than no result at all. So. We work in some models. Né? As I say, the models are only propositions to describe the real thing. But as the computers go powerful, né? we can use more and more complicated models and work in more dimensions. For example, we see when we work in two dimensions or three dimensions, it gets a lot, a lot, a lot of more complicated. Uh, when we study transport phenomena, for example, the Navier-Stokes um, equations, some we can solve it by hand. It's one direction, it's, it's not depends on time. So we can solve it by hand, there are some analytical solutions. But when we get three dimensions, three spatial dimensions, plus the time-dependent factor, so we have bulkier and bulkier programs to solve that. And we can also expand to more complex 
situation, for example, a uh, situation that uses both uh, transport phenomena and uh, chemical of metallurgy is the high entropy alloys. Né? Normally, we study alloys with two main, main components, for example, iron and carbon, and we study what the addition of a third or a fourth uh, element we do, uh, will make in the mix structure that we already know. But when we, when we study four or five main components in alloy, that is completely different. When we study newer binary systems, we cannot say for sure what will happen in a ternary system. So when we go higher and higher, I guess I, I finished that one. You can move to the next one. So our uh, next question is, uh, uh, what are the career opportunities uh, in metallurgy and material science uh, engineering? And especially in the times of uh, COVID-19, what do you suggest to young people who are searching for jobs in metallurgy and material science? Uh, like, uh, uh, especially because of COVID-19, there are so much uh, job loss uh, and uh, metallurgy field in which uh, there are generally very less number of jobs. Uh, I don't know about Brazil, but uh, generally it is considered that uh, it has less number of jobs and people who graduate in metallurgy, they are struggling for jobs. So what is your uh, suggestion for young people uh, who want to pursue career in uh, metallurgy, how they can find uh, jobs and uh, which fields are great uh, to pursue career in metallurgy? Um. My first advice would be to study very, very hard and um, get the importance of each uh, discipline of the course since beginning. I don't know uh, there in India, but here some students think only the technical disciplines are important. They want to do the physics part nice they do they do the calculus part appropriately and they suffer later so my first advice will be there dedicate for the start i know jobs now are difficult to achieve in everywhere and the metallurgy sector is a very sensitive uh, sector it's the first to feel the consequence of any crisis and it takes more time to recover but now in Brazil, we see a little growth in the last, the end of last year and beginning of this year, we can see a little recovery. And regarding jobs, I, my guess will be don't be afraid to move away from where we were born, where we are family. I know that sometimes we have some responsibilities, we have some economic issues that refrain us from moving far away to another country or to another region in our country. I say that because here in Brazil there are a lot of people that don't want to move from here, from Minas Gerais, from Sao Paulo, but we have some opportunity in another part of the country. So my first advice would be to explore more, uh, more open geographic area. So maybe we can find yes. more jobs. And not only the big companies. Né? Uh, I see the, some people that graduate the same time as me to work in small companies and they're doing well and they get experience so they can move to other job opportunities. So my, my, as job opportunity, I would say look for not only your main focus, your main area that you like most, but if it's uh, related to engineer, you can go for it and there are a lot of companies that need engineer. Maybe you are a metallurgical engineer, but you can work in a bank, you can work in another company, we can work with systems because we engineers, we have a different way to see the world that companies like it a lot. They see that different. And for the other ones that are looking for jobs and can't have it, I say keep studies, do online course, learn another language, learn some programming skills, 
explore some uh, specific programs because they are really need. Uh, in Brazil, we have some some shift in some requirements for some some uh, arbeit, uh, arbeit, uh, some work programs that we that they are not a permanent job but hire for one year or two. The minimum rec requirement and higher and higher. Before we can go for one of these jobs with only a bachelor degree. Now they need a master's. They need some experience program. So uh, to get a job, it's important to know what you want, to know what you uh, studying, so you can go further and the others are not doing. And that's uh, a, a very important horizon gets wider opportunities. And look inside the main ones. You know? When we work, we work in metallurgy, you say, oh, I want to work in a big steel company. But no, there are more than 70, 80 metals in the chemical table. So well, there are a lot of opportunities as well. That's true. In Brazil, for example, we have a lot of companies that deal with copper and zinc and vanadium in also uh, phosphate and uranium also that are hard to get but there are opportunities we need to learn about them we need to search a lot uh, i last week i was talking to my girlfriend and i i told her if you if you don't uh, have a job, use job is to get a job. So you have to dedicate eight, nine hours of your day to look for the opportunities or to study to improve yourself. So thank you very much uh, for uh, the big, big message for the young generation and especially uh, like who are uh, looking for a job. Uh, the greatest message is uh, your job is to look for a job. So, yeah. uh, uh, like instead of uh, getting depression because of not having job, they should apply, apply, yeah. and uh, then uh, get a job of their dream. So, thank you very much, Professor, and uh, it was nice yeah. talking to you. And uh, uh, it was. Uh, I'd like <laughs> also to show uh, this book. It's a, a book that we use here to study transport phenomena. That's There's cool. also a version of that in English. And one of the authors is from India, from, he studied in Madras. Madras, I don't know how to say Madras, I had in Madras, yeah. It's yeah. Chennai, yeah. I have been uh, uh, Institute Postdoc Fellow in uh, Chennai, yeah. So he worked, uh, he studied in Madras in uh, Bangalore. Yes. Bangalore, he, met, he had the master there. It's a, He's an, an Indian that the, he helped us a lot here in Brazil. His name is Varada Jan Sechadri. I don't know if you heard of him and if you see some papers of him. Yes, I but, will uh, look in uh, his profile and uh, see if we can connect with each other. And uh, I mean, through you and uh, then uh, we see how uh, we can uh, collaborate further. And uh, it was fantastic to have you interviewing and uh, thank you very much professor and uh, thank we thank you on part of uh, metallurgical engineering team and uh, hopefully uh, i will we will send uh, this uh, video recording to you also and then uh, we can share with our uh, viewers thank you very much professor okay thank you thank you have a good day or night what time is it now yeah uh, it's uh, 7 30 around